There's really no position in football easier to get famous and really rack up some accolades than the wide receiver position. I mean, poor running backs. They're good for a handful of years, and then they're usually left flaccid and weak. For every immortal one like Frank Gore, there's a hundred Devonta Freemans. I mean, they're used and abused like workhorses for years just to be taken out to the proverbial pasture known as free agency. And no one cares about offensive linemen, right? I mean, they sell like two jerseys a year, one to their mom because they feel bad for them. But how excited were they when the movie Blindside came out? They really thought it was their time to shine. They were going to get attention. No? No, you're not. Just go block for somebody making more money than you are. I mean, wide receivers, that's where it's at. You can be like Terrell Owens and get publicity just doing sit-ups in your driveway. Antonio Brown cruising around in fur coats before he went crazy. And then you got the likes of Ocho Cinco dancing in the end zone. Sadly, some of the best wide receivers in you know football's past are super diva-ish. I mean, more diva than a teenage girl that's obsessed with Instagram or that Tiki Talk thing that people are doing. So who's about to be the next star wide receiver in fantasy football? Let's check out the top second-year wideouts for 2020. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. Today we're talking about some top second-year wide receivers for 2020 fantasy football. A lot of young talent out there, right? And there's always a debate all over the place of who's going to be the best. Well, nobody can tell you who the best is going to be. All we can do is look at a lot of different stats and try to determine maybe who's the best value who gives us the biggest return on our investment possibly, Uh, definitely someone who we should target during our fantasy football drafts. Now, obviously, the likes of an A.J. Brown. They're going to be ranked probably the highest in everybody's rankings. However, maybe there's some names a little bit further down the list that have some great value. That's what this is all about. These are not rankings. These are not rankings. These are not rankings. So don't go here at the end of the video and, and say, hey, This is who this guy thinks is better. This is crazy. That's not what this is about. Like I said, we're trying to find the value. So I've compiled, in my opinion, the top 10 second-year wide receivers, and I'll compare them in in a number of different categories. They'll each receive a score of, you know, 1 through 10, because there are 10 of them. Uh, They'll compete against each other in each individual category at the end. We'll total them all up and find out who comes out on top. So for this episode, these are the 10 wide receivers we're doing. We have A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin, Marquise Hollywood-Brown, Darius Slayton, Deontay Johnson. You can see an asterisk next to his name. I put that there because you got to remember, last year, a lot of his numbers were without Big Ben under center. In fact, almost all of them were. And he had to deal with Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges. So kind of take that into account. He could be a few spots higher at the end of this. Mecole Hardman, Preston Williams, and Paris Campbell. These are the guys we're going to be comparing here today. So when we're developing this list, we kind of need to determine what it is we're going to look at. What are a few of the stats that a lot of people don't look at that could really paint a picture of where these values and returns on investments could be? So these are the metrics we came up with. The first one, value, straight and simple, right? Current ADP. This one, a lot of people do look at, right? You know, if they're drafted in the late rounds, they're a better value, obviously. The higher you have to draft them, the more expensive they are, the lower the value is. That's pretty straightforward. Second of all, team pass attempts per game. We want to find the wide receivers who play on teams that throw the ball the most. If you've got one of these run-first teams, they're less likely to have those huge uh, you know, throwing totals at the end of the games, which only limits the opportunities for a few of these guys. Defensive rankings, no, not who they're playing, but their own defense. Do they play on a team whose defense is below average, which is probably going to give up a lot of points to opponents, forcing the team to not only throw more, but throw all four quarters, and possibly end up with more garbage points you know, there at the end of fantasy matchups. Quarterback play. Obviously, all quarterbacks are not created equal. Some are better than others. Now, that also improves the the quality of the targets these guys are going to get. Target separation. Can they get open? Are they just being thrown a bunch of 50-50 balls, and maybe that makes them a little bit more risky? Target separation shows you how open they can get every time the ball is thrown their way. 
What about fantasy points per target, right? We're trying to score points, and this proves efficiency. The more fantasy points per target they get, that means the less amount of targets they need to have a great overall season. What about targets per touchdown? We want that touchdown upside, right? We want that big play potential that a lot of these guys have. Well, how many targets on average do they need to see to get that touchdown? That's another thing that we're going to measure these guys up against here today. Now, we're going to start off with value, right? And we said value was the current ADP. And you can see their scores there along the right side. Worst from at the top down to the best. One being the worst, 10 being the best, the most points possible. Now, obviously, these guys can't really control this too much, right? We know A.J. Brown has the current highest ADP at 36th overall, which right there, third, fourth round, depending on your, your league size. But he, he's going to be the number one you know wide receiver in a lot of people's rankings. But remember... These aren't rankings, just like, you know, with anything else. The higher price you have to pay, the, the lower amount the value is. The later you can get something, the better the value is. So right now, value-wise, Paris Campbell has an ADP of 188, which is basically undrafted in most leagues. However, he's somebody a lot of people are talking about. You can see the likes of DK Metcalf at 54, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin, all these guys kind of sandwiched together right there with Marquise Hollywood-Brown. Then a little bit of a break, and then you hit the triple digits where you find Slayton, Johnson, Hardman, Williams, and Campbell. What about team pass attempts per game, right? We're trying to find the teams that throw the most, so these guys have the most opportunity at targets. Well, not exactly what Baltimore is known for, so Marquise hollywood Brown's going to finish last in this category, right? The Ravens only throw on average 27 times a game last year. And on the other side of that, though, you got Preston Williams of the Miami Dolphins. They threw 38 times a game last year. However, it's a, an improved defense and a decent offensive line where they should try to get the run game going. So those numbers may come down slightly for Preston Williams. Darius Slayton of the Giants, they also threw 38 times a game. Uh, two teams who may not throw as much in 2020, uh, but however, have that ability to uh, Mecole Hardman there at 36. We know the Chiefs are going to air it out. So uh, once again, the scores there on the right side. You got Marquise Brown there finishing in last place of this category with only one point all the way down to Preston Williams, who right now, his team averages the most pass attempts per game tied right there with Darius Slayton. Next up, poor defense, right? We want teams whose defenses blow, so they have to throw more. If they're losing, they're throwing and not running as much. Well, that doesn't bode well for Marquise Hollywood-Brown again because as of right now, they're our number one ranked defense. So our defensive rankings right there, you got Deontay Johnson and the Steelers right behind him at number two. However, the further down the list you go, the worse the defenses get and the higher the scores these wide receivers uh, receive. Uh, you got DK Metcalf, 19, Terry McLaurin, 25th, and Darius Slayton, the 27th ranked defense there for his New York football Giants. He will be the leader in this category here. Quarterback play. This one is a little bit iffy, right? Because the, the worse the quarterback is, the lower your score will be because you're going to get you know not that quality of target that we were talking about earlier. That means, as of right now, Terry McLaurin's the low man. And he's not far behind of Preston Williams. you got Ryan Fitzmagic and Dwayne Haskins. Now, I do think Dwayne Haskins takes a huge step forward this year. However, right now... He's still falling a little bit behind the eight ball. Deontay Johnson has that asterisk next to his name still because that's where we have Big Ben as of right now, which is 21. Some, you know, videos coming out, some still pictures looking like he's in shape and he's ready to go. But until we can actually see him on the field in throwing with velocity, we have him at 21. Uh, he could creep a little bit higher. And it's just another one of those things that Deontay Johnson could end up being a little bit higher in this list at the end once we can actually see a healthy Big Ben. You got Darius Slayton there with Daniel Jones, A.J. Brown with Tannehill, Paris Campbell now with Phillip Rivers, all the way down to Miko Hardman and Marquise Brown being one and two with both Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. Now, this very simply could be DK Metcalf at number two uh, because Russell Wilson may be a little bit better throwing the football. Uh, than Lamar Jackson is. However, as of right now, these are the way we have the rankings. So last place of this category, it's going to be Terry McLaurin, all the way down to Marquise Hollywood-Brown and Miko Hardman taking the lead here with the best numbers. Target separation. How wide open can these guys get when they're delivered the football? Now, everybody and their mother here this offseason, myself included, 
has talked about Deontay Johnson and his ability to get open. He averaged 2.39 yards of separation for every target last year from a subpar quarterback. That's over six feet of separation every time he saw the football thrown his way. That is elite status. That is number one in the NFL among all wide receivers. What I did not know until I started putting this all together is Mecole Hardman's numbers weren't far behind. He averaged 2.02 yards of separation per target. That's also six feet of separation. He's not that far behind Deontay Johnson, except everybody's talking about Deontay Johnson. Nobody is mentioning Mecole Hardman. Debo Samuel, not that far behind, also at 1.84 yards. So you can see Darius Slayton bringing up the rear here, 1.16 yards of separation. He'll, he'll get the lowest score in this category, all the way down to Deontay Johnson receiving all 10 points. Fantasy points per target, right? We want the points. The points uh, you know, help us win fantasy matchups. Last season, Preston Williams is going to bring up the rear. He received 1.51 fantasy points per target, which don't get me wrong, that's not a horrible number whatsoever. Now, is it Mecole Hardman-esque? No, because Mecole Hardman averaged 2.77 fantasy points for every target he received. A.J. Brown, not far behind at 2.58. Debo Samuel at 2.31. A lot of solid numbers here, and you can see right here from this graphic alone why so many people are so high on these second-year wide receivers. They're explosive, and they can make big plays happen with really not a huge amount of targets. These guys all have talent. They all deserve to be drafted uh, this year in 2020. I like the upsides of all of these guys. That's why they're being graded here in this graph, but... Mecole Hardman at 2.77 fantasy points per target by far gives him the number one spot here in this category. Targets per touchdown, right? Looking for that touchdown upside. And Mecole Hardman absolutely blew it out of the water again here. He averaged a touchdown every seven targets. Now, that number cannot be sustained throughout the course of a season. Dude would end up with like 40 touchdowns. And that's not going to happen. I understand that. But what this shows you is with his ability of separation against his defender, which we talked about earlier, and his quarterback play with Patrick Mahomes, the big play potential is absolutely there for Mecole Hardman. Marquise Hollywood Brown, Darius Slayton, not far behind him at only 10 targets per touchdown. But then as you get down there towards the end, Paris Campbell, Debo Samuel. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not I'm not going away from Debo Samuel. The guy's a beast, and he is. Don't let this number just deter you. He's just not the type of guy, and even here in 2020, that I can see racking up a huge amount of touchdowns. He's you know very utilized in this offense, and they, they put him in all different types of situations to make him successful. But with Jalen Hurd coming back, hopefully healthy this year, newly drafted Brandon Ayuk, we know about George Kittle, the touchdown upside just isn't quite there enough for Debo Samuel, maybe as much as it is for some of these other guys, especially like you know from DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin, Darius Slayton, even even Deontay Johnson is somebody with his separation numbers who could see it, an uptick here this year if Big Ben is actually healthy. So you got Mecole Hardman running away with this stat also. All right, so here's the overall scores. You can see all seven metrics that we graded against and the score that they received for that associated metric. And I'm going to go ahead and sort these out. But once again, these are not rankings. These are not rankings. These are not rankings. So here they are. Final standings. Mecole Hardman, number one by a long shot. Followed by Slayton McLaurin, Metcalf, Campbell Brown, Johnson, Preston Williams, Debo Samuel, and A.J. Brown. Now please, once again, don't just look at these final standings and say that Mecole Hartman is Jake's number one second year wide receiver and he does not like A.J. Brown. Because that is not what we're talking about here. Once again, we're trying to find the value, right? And right now, Mecole Hardman is a huge value in fantasy football drafts. I don't care if it's Dynasty. I don't care if it's Redraft. He's going in double-digit rounds. And with somebody with that much upside is somebody who I want to have on my team. You're drafting him late enough that you're not reliant on him right away. And he's definitely somebody that has shown, especially through these metrics, that he has the ability for the big play to put up some big numbers if given the opportunity. Now, yes, I do like A.J. Brown and Debo Samuel. I've done shows on Deontay Johnson, so people know that I'm, I'm a fan of these guys, that I think that they have that potential. But remember, they're more expensive, so you're going to be reliant on them to get those numbers, where maybe some of these other guys towards the top you won't be reliant on, but you could really get the huge payday from them if it does work out. 
like I said, this is just meant to kind of get your brain moving in that direction, right? We looked at some stats that not a lot of people always look at, but that's what you're looking for to try to find those breakout wide receivers. Those are the numbers that kind of paint a little bit of a different picture. Now, if you take these final uh, standings of all these metrics and you compare them to what the consensus current rankings are, it obviously looks a lot different, but there's a few similarities. You can see that the likes of a Terry McLaurin and, and DK Metcalf, they're both still up there inside the top four, which in my opinion, if they're ranked that high and this metric says they are that high, those are names that I'm definitely 100% interested in here come 2020 fantasy football. It's just another way to look at names, to break down some numbers, to try to find those little nuggets of information. Uh, we can go out here and say, oh, this is my guy, and this is why I like him, and this is why you should draft him. But adding numbers to the backside of it is why we do these deep dives that we do. We're trying just to get the brain moving to, to have you look at different things because that's when you find those hidden gems that win you fantasy football championships. So this was something a little bit different. I've never done anything like this before. Like I said, I sat behind a computer and I just created it one day for like five or six hours. And, and I couldn't even hardly see at the end of the day because I've been staring at a computer screen for so long. But we're just trying to find ways... To, to help you out, the team owner. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this model. Let me know what you think about how we went about creating it. Uh, once again, it's not rankings. I think I've said that like seven, eight times. I'm not saying that I don't like A.J. Brown. So don't put that down below in the comment section because obviously I think he's a very talented wide receiver that I will probably have a few shares of here this year. All this does is, you know, help you find those little bit of hidden gems. And, and that's what it's all about, is just trying to be a little bit different. We don't want to be cookie cutter like every everybody else. We don't want to be like every other website or channel. We want to try to bring things to you that sets you apart from everybody else. And that's what we were trying to do here today. But I want to hear your feedback. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Was this useful at all? Did I waste five hours of my time trying to put something together? Or do we have something here that maybe we can build upon and expand and really give ourselves a tool here at Headliner Nation that nobody else has. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to accomplish. And we need your help to do it also. So make sure you leave those comments down below. The channel continues to grow. And we greatly appreciate your support. If you like deep diving information like this, we've got a ton of other videos on the channel. Plus, our draft guide is due to drop uh, within a week or so. It's almost done. So head over to thefantasyheadliners.com and get your copy ordered uh, right now. It's available for pre-order. But like I said, it'll be out soon. Looking forward to doing that. Hopefully this was some great information. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button. We look forward to talking to you. We'll catch you later. Thanks.